So you go ahead and do your calculations. What can you afford off of $1,200 a month? Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you all that are new to this channel, welcome. Thank you for finding me. I don't know how you did, but I'm glad you have. I'm just going to tell you right now, go ahead and click that subscribe button. It's down here or down there. One of those ways because you're going to love this channel. You're going to love all the information that I give you. You're going to love all these adventures that I go on. So go ahead and save yourself the time from later and click that subscribe button right now. And then on top of that, go ahead and click the little bell so you can be notified every time I post a new video. Because let's be real. I'm just not that consistent. I'm working on it. I really, really am. But the lifestyle of a flight attendant just sometimes does not allow me to be as consistent as I would like to be. <laughs> but um, let's go ahead and jump right into this video. As you can tell by the title of this video, I am going to be discussing the top 10 things you should consider before jumping into this career as a flight attendant. All right, so the number let's one get it thing wrong. that surprises most people once they get into this career is that they realize that becoming a flight attendant was a complete lifestyle change. You're not just getting a new job, you know, you're not just switching up careers completely. You're changing your entire life, honey. The entire thing. So, I've been flying for about 9 or 10 months now and my life has changed tremendously and some things are positive and then there's some negative things so that's what we're gonna really discuss my entire list is all about the lifestyle changes that happen um, so we're just gonna break it down into detail number one main thing is to know is that you are going to have a lifestyle change all right so the number two thing to consider is your budgeting and your finances because once you become a flight attendant a first year flight attendant second year flight attendant and maybe even the third year flight attendant depending on the company that you chose and which chose you back you're not gonna be making any money honey okay let me tell you because flight attendants yes the hourly might seem nice and high you're getting paid 25 dollars an hour but the way that we get paid is totally different. So you're only getting paid for flight time, the amount of hours that you're in the air, not the actual full duty day. Sometimes you fly for six hours out of the day, but you're technically at, at work for 10 hours, but you're only getting paid that $25 an hour for those six hours. Um, that's another video for another day. We're not getting into that. So making sure that you budget and... <laughs> Ooh, child, I can't preach this enough. Trust me, when I went to my friends to get um, notes and ideas from this video, because I always go to my friends and say, okay, I'm doing this video, you know, what should I talk about? What should I throw in? Everybody's first thing was, girl, tell them about being broke. <laughs> so it's, it's just, it's, that is one of the downsides. I'm not going to say it's negative, but it is a huge downside to becoming a flight attendant once you start considering this career you start stacking your money you start saving for days because you're gonna be broke for about a good year and a half I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna put it out there for the first six months of me being a flight attendant my bi-weekly paychecks or my um not bi-weekly my semi-monthly paychecks were six hundred dollars so I was bringing in twelve hundred dollars a month so you go ahead and do your calculations. What can you afford off of $1,200 a month? That's all I'm really gonna say about that. So oh, the third thing to consider when becoming a flight attendant are your relationships and your friendships. Um, they're going to struggle and you and that other person have to learn to find a balance between the friendship because out of my own experience, sit in reserve, you're going to be at your base for 18 days out of the month and maybe home for 12 of those days, maybe not, depending on what you decide to do. So those friendships that you've had prior to this um, lifestyle change, career change, 
those people are really going to have to learn to adjust to your new lifestyle, um, be there for you from a distance. Obviously, there's things that you can do to keep those friendships and those relationships going, FaceTime, social media, blah, blah, blah. Um, but you know, if you and your boyfriend are, are close enough and y'all are good and you want to put him on your bennies as your companion, then go ahead and bring him on the layover every, every now and then. Um, but yeah, I know from experience, you know, keeping, I don't have no boyfriend, so that part I don't really have to worry about, but just friendships in general, um, catching up with your friends, you know, but when I'm flying, <laughs> like if I'm on a trip, I really am incognito, even though I'm not, I may not be busy and on the go the entire time, I'm tired. You know, I'm, I'm honestly drained after flying for six and a half hours from Boston to San Francisco. Yeah, I have some downtime, but I also want to catch up on my TV shows. You know, I also want to sleep and, you know, things like that. So calling my friends is not always at the top of my priority list. And so that is just something that I have to work on. Thank God that I have really, really good friends and, you know, our friendship goes beyond that so once I do pick up the phone and call you know we can pick up at the drop of you know at the drop of a beat but not everybody is like that so you do have to figure out a way to balance out those relationships and friendships husband um, you're going to need support from these people that are in your life that's that's really that that's really it you know you can't if you're married you know and if you have kids your spouse needs to be a hundred percent behind your decision of becoming a flight attendant because I don't know how else it could work honestly <laughs> I don't I don't know that's truly something to sit down and have an open conversation about with the people that you consider important in your life husband mother kids best friends whatever you know are you going to support me while i make this lifestyle change i think it's a conversation number to be four had. thing to consider is going to be jet lag it is real y'all and it's not only flights that are like more than 10 hours long that jet lag you out no 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 no, no. so as some of y'all may know, I, I work our first class program now, so I'm always going east coast, west coast, east coast, west coast, back and forth, back and forth. One day I'm east, one day I'm west. Um, and that little three hour difference, it does me in. <laughs> it does me in. It's always a blessing to come to the west coast because you gain three more hours, but going back east, you lose those three hours. So your sleep pattern is off and it's really hard to try to adjust back you probably need about a good week off from flying just to get your body back in a rhythm of sleeping correctly and being on the right time zone so yeah so if you're somebody like me that that really enjoy taking your naps and um, being fully rested and ready for the day sometimes you're 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 just not going to get that opportunity to take that hour nap in the middle of the day. You flew from San Francisco to Boston, you get to the hotel at 10 p.m. And then, you know, you just finished a six, seven hour flight and then you got to be up the next morning back out at, you know, 8 a.m. That may seem like a lot of time, but your body is tired. You're really, really exhausted. So you have to find a way to mentally adjust to. The fifth thing to consider is your health. And really, health should be at the top of this list, you know, because once again, all of this is under lifestyle change. But your health, your health is going to take a big hit, y'all. It's going to be huge. and It's just going to slap you in the face. You're not even going to know what hits you. Before I got this job, I was running 5K every day, going to the gym every day, and it just slowly trickled down to nothing. Shame to say, but I've literally gained a good 20 pounds since I've started flying. And I'm not the only person it's happened to, so I know it's not just me being like horrible, but it just doesn't make you feel good. So trying to find a healthy balance. Eating healthy is hard because for one, you ain't got no money to eat healthy. Eating healthy is expensive, which is a problem in America, but whatever. 
It shouldn't cost that much to get some nice avocados and a little quinoa, but it does. So that's not going to be your first choice all the time. You're just going to want to fill your belly with something filling and that you can afford. And that's literally how a lot of flight attendants gain so much weight in the beginning because we can't afford the, the best and the healthiest food for us, but we're still hungry. So either you're snacking on the plane, eating the plane food, which is high in sodium, it's horrible for you, or you're eating the food in the airport, stopping at the quickest, cheapest thing, the McDonald's or the, the Burger King or whatever, and getting a little dollar menu burger because you're hungry and you're tired of eating the food on the plane. So, <laughs> being healthy is, it's, um, it's important. It's very important, but it's not easy to, to get done all the time. Um, and then just working out, trying to find that schedule. So, like, for me, I'm on this four-day trip right now, and I, I like working out. I like getting up and going to the gym. Sometimes you're so tired, you don't have the energy to get up. Which is really all a mental thing, once again. You just got to tell yourself to get up and do it. Um, so, yeah, you know, that's that's just something else to consider. If you're a really big health guru and you want to work out every day and you're in the gym three hours a day and you're meal prepping all the time and you're buying the healthiest of the food, um, hopefully you've saved up some money so you can continue living that lifestyle. But if not, it's something to consider. The sixth thing to consider when becoming a flight attendant, missing important events. So birthdays, engagement parties, graduations, holidays, 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 Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, 4th of July, Memorial Day, whatever it is that you and your friends celebrate, um, annually and you're always there and you really love and enjoy going girl bye you're not getting those days off all the time you know every year especially as a new flight attendant everything is about seniority everything 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 is about seniority so you have to put in your time to get to the point where you can request off on those days and not have to work so yeah believe that you'll probably be working on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve you know believe that you'll be working Thanksgiving you know those really important days to you um, you're gonna just have to say bye-bye to a few of them hopefully you can figure something out like this past Christmas I got super lucky I had to work but I was able to pick up a layover that I was able to actually be home for Christmas Day it was a blessing it's my first year so and I thank God for it so much because I I love my family. <laughs> I love my family to death and missing holidays is, you know, it, it hit me a lot harder than I thought it would. It smacked me dead in the face because I wasn't able to go home for Thanksgiving. I did get to spend it with other family, but you know, not at home with my mom and my brother and them. But it was it was still great, but you know, it just hit me in the face like, wow, the traditions that I'm used to, the things that I'm used to doing um, are no more. They're just simply no more until I'm flying for five, ten years and you know, I have enough seniority in the company to where, you know, I can take off. Um, but yeah, that's something to consider. Number seven, layovers. So when you go to these flight attendant interviews, you probably always hear advice and people say, don't tell the recruiters that you want to do this job for the travel, which they're right. That should not be your one and only reason of why you want to become a flight attendant. But we all know, we all know that we're doing this job for the nice layovers and all of that. And little did you know, all your layovers ain't going to be that nice. So get ready for that. That is something to consider. Sometimes you're going to get stuck in the most podunk cities that you ain't never heard of. And you're going to be like, okay, well, this is what I signed up for. <laughs> so that is just something to consider. And then, yes, sometimes you will be surprised with the most amazing Bermuda layover or Barbados or, you know, San Francisco or wherever, just a city that you've never seen, you've always wanted to go. You'll get those. But you do have to remember that 50% of the other time, you're going to get some of those other things where you're like, okay. Well, what's to do here? Not a damn thing.
<laughs> number eight thing to consider before becoming a flight attendant is that you need to have a personable personality, okay? As you live your day-to-day -day life, and no matter how great of a person you may be, there may be people that you just in general just would not talk to because you don't think you're going to mesh with that person. Just simply. Not because you're, you're nasty and you're mean and you're rude or whatever, but we're just human. We have these thoughts. But once you become a flight attendant, you don't have no choice but to mesh with these people. Like I was saying earlier, you're stuck on an airplane for an hour with coworkers that you didn't know until y'all all reported at the gate. And they may not be your favorite person. They may be of a different nationality or religion. And you all may have different beliefs and all kind of stuff. But... You need to learn to be personable with these people. And not even just your coworkers. We're talking about the people on the aircraft. As a flight attendant, you honestly have to put all type of judgments that you may have behind you because you are there to make sure these people are having a safe and comfortable flight. So whatever you're thinking about that person, it don't matter. It don't matter because you're there to do your job. So if you cannot be that personable person and and put everything else besides you once you step onto that aircraft, then this job may not be for you. Straight up, it's not for you. The ninth thing to consider when becoming a flight attendant is that you're gonna wear multiple hats. You know, you're not just walking down that aisle passing out um, cookies and, and cokes, honey. That's, that's not it. Let me tell you, three times this week I have cleaned up throw up on an airplane and I did it with a smile on my face because that's what we're there to do people are sick people want to talk people people want you to wait on them hand and foot you once you go to flight attendant training you will realize everything that they teach you you are going to one day put to use and they're not teaching you how to how to um, push the cards down the aisle Honey, that's not what they're teaching you. They're teaching you everything else. They're teaching you CPR. They're teaching you how to deal with a planned emergency. They're teaching you how to deal with unplanned emergencies. Um, they're teaching you how to deal with decompressions and so on and so on and so on. And these are all things that you have to be aware of while you're going down the aisle and passing out your cookies and Cokes. Um, customers get sick during turbulence. People don't fly all the time. So people, they get sick. It's your job to help these people in those moments. It's your turn to be the nurse or the doctor when they need you. If somebody's having a heart attack, they're looking for the flight attendant, right? Sometimes you'll be in your galley just having your me time, talking to your crew, relaxing. You think you've done everything for the customers, and here comes that one customer that wants to stand back there and talk to you about everything that's going on in their life and what you got to do talk right back to them you got to be their psychiatrist for that hour or two or 30 minutes or however long they decide to stand back there you might even be somebody's yoga teacher because they want to stretch it out in the galley you know like there's so many things that you have to do on the airplane that you are just like this ain't what i signed up for but yeah actually it is what you signed up for <laughs> um and the tenth and final thing to consider before becoming a flight attendant that this is the hugest lifestyle change that you will probably ever make well maybe maybe not but it's a big deal and you're going to absolutely love it and if you don't love it quit but hey it's a great decision Honestly, I I still wouldn't change it for the world. Every day isn't a happy day. Um, and every day isn't a negative day. Some days you're just like, oh my gosh, this is why I do this. Because you really do meet awesome people. People on the plane. You make new friends. Um, you get to go to beautiful places regardless of if it was somewhere that's on your bucket list or not. Um, so it's, it's just one of those things that... You say, wow, I'm really lucky to be able to have this job even after you just cleaned up that throw up on that seat. <laughs> but that's going to be it for this video, y'all. I just wanted to give you my 10 cents on things that you should consider before becoming a flight attendant. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to go ahead.